Hey folks, uh, look at that. We're almost starting on time today. All right. Cool beans. Um, okay, so today I wanted to um, I wanted to talk about uh, some parenting tips. And I know when you're a parent, you, you get you, you get tips from everywhere. You people always come out with their opinions on how you should raise your kids, and um, you know it, it's just how it is. Um, it, and as a parent, you understand that, you know, you just kind of have to take all the information. You got to be gracious about it, but then you just, you kind of take it all with a grain of salt. You you go back and you evaluate, you know, what makes sense to you and what doesn't. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to talk about some parenting tips today. Because um, as you guys know, uh, I have two young children, um, like kindergarten, first first grade age. Um, and uh, that's been, that's been a fun journey um, so far. And, and one I'm looking forward to continuing down for many years to come. Um, oh, and so we had, uh, we got a little birthday streamer up there. Uh, that was for my father-in-law. He's, uh, 67th birthday, um, was this past weekend. And, um, it was really nice cause we had them, uh, my, uh, mother and father-in-law, uh, over mother-in-law and father-in-law, not my mother, but my wife, <laughs> my wife's parents, uh, they came over this weekend and, um, I, I cooked everybody some steaks and it was, it was really nice being able to celebrate a birthday in person. Um, we've all got vaccinated and I know not everything's back to normal and it probably won't be for a good long while, but it was really, really nice. Um, having some semblance of normalcy back in our lives. Um, you know, I, we've all been needing that for a long time. And um, hopefully you are able to, um, you know, start getting things back to normal a little bit as well. Um, but anyway, so what I wanted to talk about was um, some of the things, some of the techniques that uh, we have been using in our household for, raising our kids. And it, if you have little kids, you know, it's not easy. Um, you know, being a parent is so much like being a teacher, um, a brand new teacher in the sense that uh, you really have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's funny when we grow up as kids and as students, we, you know, especially young ones, we, we kind of look to the adults in our lives and think that they have all their stuff together and they're the geniuses. You know, my, my mom's a genius. My dad's a genius. Um, and then when you grow up and then you become a parent or a teacher, you realize, yeah, yeah, my parents, my teachers had no idea what was going on. They were just kind of winging it the whole time. Um, what, yeah, that might be a little bit harsh, but it's there's some truth to that. There's definitely some truth to that. Um, but one of the uh, one of the things, actually, two of the things that uh, we have been uh, trialing with some success with our kids is um, having them do chores around the house, um, which I know is kind of a staple for most families. But then also uh, we started paying them an allowance. Um, now it's not much. Uh, they get, let's see, uh, they get about basically $2 a week. Um, it used to be $1 a week and then we bumped it up a little bit to $2. Um, yeah, they got a raise somewhere along, uh, along the way. Um, and then I usually pay them every two weeks. So they usually get four bucks every two weeks, which, you know, to a kindergartner and a first grader, that's, that's actually quite a bit of money. And, um, they, they're doing quite well with that. I think my son, uh, he, uh, a few weeks ago, he actually was able to save up and he bought his, he's, he's this many, uh, he bought his first video game, um, which I let him, I, I went ahead and downloaded him, uh, uh, Super Mario Maker 2 on my Nintendo Switch. And so he'll, um, I'll let him play that on there. And he actually, he owns that game. He bought that game with his own money, um, and uh, I was really proud of him because he had set a goal and he'd saved up money to reach that goal, which was the whole point of the exercise in the first place. I wanted them uh, at this age, I want them to um, start equating work that they do with some sort of value. Um, and then from there, try to set goals 
um, smart goals, goals that have uh, defined features um, and, uh, and work towards those goals. It's, there's, there's a sense of longevity there um, that it, it's, it's kind of hard to replicate when you don't have some sort of tangible, um, you know, a tangible value tangible value is money tangible value I, I guess it kind of is you know because you pay them you pay them dollars and coins and stuff um, some sort of tangible value with that where like okay if I work for X number of weeks I can save up and get the thing that I want um, sometime in the future it keeps their mindset on a a longer term goal rather than you know just something that excites them for the weekend and then that's it. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we wanted to start giving the kids an, an allowance. Now, my daughter, she has not really spent um, much of her money. She might have spent like a little bit here or there, but she's got, shoot, over a hundred bucks saved so far. She hadn't really spent much of any, any of it. Um, she's got like 120 bucks already. And, you know, this is, this is doing, you know, weekend chores for, I don't know, not even, not even six months. I think we started this maybe, maybe six or seven months ago and she's, she's got some money saved up. Um, she did, she did get some money for like Christmas and birthdays, um, and things like that, uh, which she also hasn't spent, but, um, uh, she's, uh, She's doing pretty well. Um, she thinks she wants to save up for a uh, Nintendo Switch Lite, um, but she's not really in that into video games like her brother is. So I think when she gets to that goal, she's probably going to change her mind. She's she's going to look at it like, um, you know what? There, it could go one of two ways. She could either you know save up for that goal and then be like, all right, well, hey, it took me a while, but I saved up for this goal. More than likely, what's going to happen though is she's going to she's going to look at the money that she has, and look at the thing that she thinks she wants, and and she's going to be like, you know, it took me so long to save up for this. Do I really want this, you know, video game thing that I'm not that interested in? I'm probably not going to play. Uh, that's that's more than likely what's going to happen, but um, we'll we'll see how that actually plays out. Um, but however it goes you know the beauty of that is that she's the one who gets to decide whether she spends that money or not and and that's a really powerful thing you know when you're teaching kids to have a little bit of agency um you know we as parents we never we're never really looking forward to our kids growing up and becoming independent but we know that that's a a vital necessary aspect of our children, um, you know, transitioning into full grown adults is, is that they, they have to, they have to grow up, they have to become independent. Um, and in most of these lessons are, you know, these life lessons about work and value, um, you know, it's, it's best learned over time. Um, you don't really want to wait until the kids in middle school or high school before you start teaching them about the value of money. Um, it's, this is my personal opinion. You know, if you got a different philosophy on parenting, then hey, it's it's your kids. You do what you want. Um, but for me and and our family, um, that's we we really want to get them acclimated um, to. Uh, doing chores around the house, um, you know, taking care of their personal space, cleaning up after themselves. Um, some of these things get paid and some of them don't. I know some families, they look at chores like, well, hey, these are just things that you have to do to live and survive. And yeah, that's that's true. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, uh, that philosophy. Um, and for us, uh, they don't get paid for everything. You know, they get paid for... Um, generally things that I think their chores right now are things that um, that help out the family but aren't necessarily directly related to the messes that they make. Um, things that that I and their mother don't want to do ourselves. So for example, my son, uh, his main aside from like you know doing your chores and not arguing about it, um, his main, um, what do you call it? His main chore that he gets paid for is helping me load and unload the dishwasher. 
Um, and, he, and we pretty much do that every day. Um, so almost every day he's in there helping me with the uh, dishwasher loading and unloading. I get the big stuff, um, obviously, because he's, you know, he's five, you know, he can't, he can't carry big pots and pans. Um, but he's actually getting really good at loading and unloading the dishwasher. And he gets excited about it when I say, hey, it's time to, it's time to do the dishes. He will pause his video game. He will turn off his video. He'll he'll stop what he's doing, and sort of happily teeter on into the the kitchen and help me out. And he'll say things like, "I like unloading the dishes. I like doing the dishes," because he knows that he is you know at the end of the week he's going to get paid. And you know he's always talking about, "Oh yeah, I'm saving up for the next you know Super Mario Lego set that he really wants. I can't wait until." I have enough to buy the, the the piece of plastic that you know is going to captivate him and, and keep his attention. Um, but you know that's that at that age, you know, chasing after those goals is a good thing. You know, uh, I don't I don't have to beat him down with the reality of you know uh, taxes and, and things like that until he's a bit older. You know, baby steps, right? Um, you know, teach them about the the value of, of labor and, and your work early on. My daughter, she cleans the bathroom, and that's kind of a weekend chore. So every weekend, she's in there cleaning the bathroom, um, and then she uh, uh, she gets her money that way. They still have to clean up their own toys. They have to keep their room clean. They've got to you know keep themselves clean. Um, these are things that they don't they don't get paid for because uh, those are exclusively their messes. Um, but you know, chores around the house, that's, that, that's stuff that, yeah, I could do or their mother could do, but we don't want to. So we pay somebody else to do it. Um, the other, uh, the other aspect of it is that getting them used to earning money, earning cash, um, because what we do, we make a we make a big thing about it. So whenever they get paid, whether it's in coins or dollar bills, that's an opportunity to count through each individual piece. So if I pay them a dollar in quarters, right? All right, guys, count it out. 25, 50, 75, 100. Okay, that's one dollar. And so my kids, they know how to count money. You know, that's uh, it's a teachable moment. It's a learning opportunity. Um, every so often, my son will be, can we count my money? Or when he gets paid, hey, can we count all what I have? And so we'll take the, uh, in fact, he's got his money jar up here. He's also got some um, Pixie Land tokens in here, which are not quarters, but he likes them because they're golden colored. Um, so we'll actually take take out his money jar and take everything out and we'll count it. Okay, this is a 20, this is a five, you know, what does that make? 25. Um, so, you know, teaching them math, teaching them how to count money, um, you know, how to think in that sort of um, sort of numerical value space. You know, these are little lessons that, um, you know, we kind of take for granted as we grow up, you know, that, well, obviously people know how to count. Well, uh, a kindergartner doesn't know how to count money, you know, uh, by themselves unless they've been taught. Nobody understands this stuff unless they've been taught. And that teaching has, I mean, it happens over time. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't, it's not just like, oh yeah, you graduated kindergarten, you graduated first grade. Well, you know money now, you know math, you know how to add, you know how to count. Um, you know, and that's and that's why education is so important and, and your elementary school teachers are, are godsends because, you know, they, they generally teach um, our young children all of these important lessons that we don't have to. Um, so teaching them, um, you know, there, there's also some like longer plays here as well. Um, right now it's all very simple. We're teaching them simple lessons like, um, you know, Hey, you work, you earn money, right? Now, those of us in the real world, we understand that, yeah, that works on the surface, but in the real world, money is not necessarily tied to directly to work. It is if you're working like an hour hourly wage, um, but we you can look at the you know Jeff Bezos's and the Elon Musks and the the Bill Gates and and you understand that um, 
the amount of money that you actually make really has nothing to do with how hard you work or the number of hours that you work. Um, you know, anyone with a 401k can tell you, like, I, I, I've got my, uh, I've got my Roth IRA. I'm not working for that money. Like I'm putting the money in and I'm, I'm getting interest, not interest, but, uh, you know, it's an investment I'm getting, um, that, that money's increasing. Um, that, that investment is getting bigger and bigger. I'm not doing any work to, <laughs> to make that increase. It's just happening. Um, you know, because I, I, it's a smart investment, right? Um, but that that's kind of lost on little children. <laughs> you know, that that's one of those, um, you know, the kids get older and they learn the truth about things that, yeah, you're, you're, um, the amount of work that you do, it doesn't actually tie directly to uh, your money. Um, so that's why, that's partly why we want to, um, you know, actually pay them for, uh, you know, for their, for their efforts um, so that they can have sort of like a grounded, um, a grounded approach to the value that they earn, um, you know, because uh, if, if we didn't, at least how I feel, if we didn't uh, attach any sort of monetary value to their chores, you know, they, okay, first of all, they wouldn't be earning any money. They wouldn't have that sort of agency where they can feel like they can spend their money that they've earned. Um, and, you know, it's it's difficult to, it's difficult to think, well, where would that come from? They need it to grow up. You know, they need that agency, that independence, you know, that feeling that, hey, I earned some money. This is mine. You know, I want to spend it wisely. Right. Um, if you don't have that sense of, you know, you you have ownership over that money, you stop spending it wisely. Or it's, it's difficult to spend it wisely when you don't feel like it's your money that was your time. And that's really what it comes down to is, you know, your work equals your time and that's the the advanced lesson that we're not quite teaching our kids yet um you know when you're when you're younger you earn money based on the amount of time uh the amount of of effort that you put out so your work equals the amount of time uh of your life that you spend earning that money and so time is money so your work is uh directly related to your money um but as you as you grow up, uh, we naturally try to increase our efficiency. So you want, as you grow up, you want your uh, work to be worth more, uh, which also means you want your time to be worth more. You know, if you're making two dollars a week as a five year old, um, that's great money when you're five. But when you're fifteen. That's not so great. Two dollars a week, you're not going to get very far with that. You know, first of all, the things that you want to buy tend to be more expensive, uh, and then as you get older, um, you get into your late teens and early twenties and thirties. Um, you know that that factor just increases and increases. You know, um, you you don't want to be. You know, minimum wage sounds great. You know, whether depending on where you're at, ten dollars, twelve dollars, fifteen dollars an hour. That sounds great when you're you know when you're 18 19 years old um you don't have a family you don't have uh built well not too many bills um and and um responsibilities and stuff but as you get older you um you maybe want to buy a house you want to buy a car start a family um you know those bills start piling up you know suddenly minimum wage doesn't sound so good anymore and so you want to make sure it's, I mean, you're not working more hours than you could maybe work more hours in the day, but really what you want to be doing is working, uh, for more money per hour. Okay. You, you could, you could work more hours, but you only get so many hours a day. You can't work 25 hours a day. Can't even work 24 hours a day because you got to sleep sometime. Um, but eventually you want to make it so that your time is actually worth more, um, than, than it was before. But, uh, that's, that's that lesson for another day sort of thing. But you, you don't get started down that path of, you know, oh, Hey, I, I want to earn more money with my time, um, without starting 
in those baby steps, you know, uh, starting with the, the $2 a week or, you know, $5 every two weeks or, or whatever that, uh, that early phase is. So they're young, um, long story short, we're trying to start them early, um, getting them a, a baseline sense of what their time is worth, what their effort is worth, um, teaching them about money, what money can do, um, you know, giving them that sense of agency, um, that, that sense of independence um, in, in small steps so that as it grows over time, um, you know, as, as they grow over time, uh, they can perform more work, they can earn more money, they can get more of a sense of agency and independence and ownership over, um, over the things that they do. And that's really, that's really my goal as a parent. That's, that's our goal as parents. Um, whether or not that applies to you, you know, if, if you're a parent or you want to be a parent, you'll, you'll find a way to, to parent the way that you want, um, the way that you find most effective. I, I have faith in that, but, uh, if this helps at all, then great. If not, then, um, well, you'll, you'll find your own way. So anyway, I hope you guys all have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.